Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In this video, I want to clearly explain derivatives. As last week saw Ledger X open the doors to the first ever trading of Bitcoin derivatives. Now, this can be a complicated subject, but hopefully by the end of this presentation, you're going to clearly understand how this all works. So, a derivative is any security or investment tool that derives its price and tracks the value of another underlying asset, in this case, Bitcoin. So there's a couple of reasons for this to happen. So we know that Bitcoin price is very volatile and this allows for investors to hedge against future price volatility. And it also allows for investors to speculate on the price of Bitcoin at future dates. So recently we saw in the news that Ledger X um, was approved by the CFTC to regulate swaps and derivatives. Now, there's a few different types of derivatives, so we're going to concentrate on options, which are the most common type for the purpose of this presentation. So swaps are basically just an exchange of one security for another at a set future date, and futures are just the trading of a, a set asset at a set price at a future date. But we're going to concentrate on puts and calls, which are the two types of options which give investors the um, option to buy or sell at a future date at a set price. So again, you're starting to see why this is attractive for those big players in this space as they need these, these tools um, before they flood in with this big money. It's gonna further legitimize cryptocurrency as an asset class, allowing these big investment funds to, to hedge against all the um, volatility we see in this space in general. So they've received approval from the CFTC um, to trade these swaps and options on digital currencies. So Ledger X is registered with the CFTC. Um, it's the first federally regulated exchange and clearinghouse to list and clear physically settled Bitcoin swaps and options for the institutional market. So again, exciting stuff. This is another on-ramp. Um, again, to prove that cryptocurrency is fast becoming a real asset class. Now, this is a just a basic um, pull from their website of last week's data on the different options that are traded. So we can click on you know, a set date here. Um, again, we can see the put and the call that were traded on that day. So what's a put and what's a call? So Let's jump over to a real option chain and have a look at some Apple shares because I trade options for a living. So here we're looking at the price of Apple shares, $156, and we're looking at the option chain for the different months in the future. So let's just go to December and see what investors are trading um, option-wise. So here we have the price sitting right in the middle here at 156, and we have every $5, there's investors making bets. So here we see puts which are an option to sell at, the, at this price in the future. So if you're a large investment fund and you own a lot of Apple shares, you might wanna buy a, a 140 put, which means that you have the option to, if Apple shares are to crash in the future, you have the option to sell them to someone else for $140 and you can buy that option. So, and again, if you don't think this is likely to happen, if you don't think Apple shares are gonna crash down to 140 or below, you would sell this option and this is how a market is created in options. And the flip side is call. So you have the option to buy at that set date in December in the future. Now, if you're really um, positive on Apple and you think the price is gonna go well above 170 here in, by December, you might buy this call option and that gives you the option to buy Apple shares for $170 in the future. If you think they're gonna be up to $180 or so in the future, you might be happy to pay $1.30 for that option to buy shares for $170 at that stage in the future. Now again, this is complicated stuff. You don't need to understand everything that's on this page. I just wanted to show you a real world example of an option chain and how they're traded in the real world. So let's jump over back to this basic Bitcoin option chain. And again, instead of having all those different options, we only have um, one, one date and one put and one call here, okay? So this is the, again, October 27th. So this expires um, Friday next week. And this gives someone the option to sell a put Bitcoin to someone else 
at $5,600. So again, this is a way for investors to bet that they think the price is gonna be below 5,600 or above 5,600 if they buy that call. They have the option to buy Bitcoin for this price in the future. And again, Bitcoin's obviously trading above that price at the moment. So obviously this is more expensive. So that's why someone would have to pay a lot of money to, for the option to buy Bitcoin at 5,600 because it's already trading above that price. So again, complicated stuff. All you really need to get your head around is call is the option to buy something at this price in the future. Put is the option to sell something at that price in the future. And again, people are same as we have a bid and ask, a buy and a seller for shares. People are buying and selling um, these options, making the bets about what they think the price is going to do in the future. And even if these things don't occur, it's just a way for those big institutions to hedge against the possibility of those fluctuations in price. So what I want to talk about now is whether or not this is a good thing for the market in general. So a lot of brokers are just going to offer what's called a CFD, so a contract for difference. So they're not actually going to be buying Bitcoin. So although there might be a lot of money come into the the space, the derivative space, it doesn't mean that that money is going to flow actually into cryptocurrency, into the Bitcoin market cap. So just like we see in gold, hedge funds can trade billions of dollars in, in, in notional value of, of derivatives, but there might not even be $6 billion worth of gold um, you know, in the, in the physical market, in the mines, making that much gold in the real world. So yet we have these huge speculators and price and money flowing through derivatives. And you guys have probably heard about, you know, the stock market's gonna crash because the derivatives far exceed the value of the underlying asset which, which they're tracking, which I spoke about. So, you know, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or not. So allowing people to invest without actually under, um, owning the underlying asset, maybe we want more people flowing actually into Bitcoin to buy Bitcoin rather than all this big hedge fund money just speculating in derivatives and the money itself doesn't flow into Bitcoin itself, into that Bitcoin market cap. So look, make with it off you will. If you follow me on Hot Copper, okay, on the Australian stock market, you know that my signature down the bottom here is men in suits at keyboard should not determine the price of real goods produced by real people. And that's what I worry about. The fact that there's gonna be all these computer algorithms and traders sitting in these hedge funds, trading back and forward on their derivatives, you know, maybe pushing the price of, of cryptocurrency around without actually ever buying cryptocurrency, investing in the underlying asset. So make of that what you will. I hope you've enjoyed that presentation. Please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.